we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good, that you are good, that you are good indeed. Bring blessing to us, O oh Lord, so we can bring blessing. We'd ask for your anointing on your word this day. Transform us by your power, mercy, and grace. Fill us with your spirit. In Christ's name, amen. 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 All so right. We're, in, we're so. trying this in... So Jesus has had a, a historic day of, um, not to him, but to us, of touching lives and doing the miraculous and bringing healing and, you know. Bring blessing to us and miraculous and bringing healing and, <laughs> and the sound works, which is a good thing. And, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, and so here we are in... Luke 11, and, yep. um, yep. sorry, Picking just, up in verse 37. Yep. Yeah, so, um, right, this is uh, following through from uh, the conversations that uh, he's, he's had uh, pertaining to the, uh, the lamp and how the lamp lights the soul, et cetera, the eye. Uh, being the gateway for light and uh, speaking with the um, Pharisees and that's always a pleasant uh, <laughs> group to speak with this is his uh, it's almost like a, well they are a nemesis in effect um, but picking up in verse 37 let's let the word speak for itself here um, we're using the NLT version Luke 11 37 now after Jesus had spoken a Pharisee asked him to have lunch with him. He went into the Pharisee's home and reclined at the table without ceremonially washing his hands. Okay, so um, you wonder why. Why would a Pharisee have Jesus in his house? Is he an honest seeker? Is he a troublemaker trying to make the Lord Jesus look bad? Is he, uh, is it just the latest, the latest, um, show in town, you know, um, oh yeah, this is a famous person, uh, why don't I have him to lunch? And yeah, may, I make one, may I make one correction there? I think I said NLT, we're actually in AMP, Amplified here. Good, uh, thank you. That's what, I just, that's what I just read, I just want to uh, mention that, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so, uh, so we don't know the heart of the Pharisee, all we know for sure is that Jesus is at lunch with this with this guy and his and the people he invited to lunch. Uh, so he goes into the Pharisee's house, reclines at the table. Um, it was common to not kind of sit in a chair, but but uh, recline like benches and stuff at a table uh, and and recline against each other, so to speak. Okay without ceremoniously washing their hands. Now, so the Lord Jesus is not advocating dirty hands here, but the ceremonial washing wasn't really um, scrub all 10 effects. Um, I don't know, some health board figured out 10 things you should do when you wash your hands. I can't even remember them all, but um, that's not what this is. This is uh, 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 a ritual that doesn't isn't as concerned with cleansing the hands as the ritual of cleansing the hands. Uh, so, um, going through the motions. Yes, going through the motions. Exactly. I wish I had said that. So, thirty-eight. Yeah, verse thirty-eight. The Pharisee noticed this and was surprised that Jesus did not first ceremonially wash before the meal. Okay. But the Lord, yeah, so, go. so the Lord Jesus is a guest in his house and, um, and noticing that the Lord Jesus, now Jesus certainly knows about ceremonially washing their hands. So why do you think he didn't? Uh, perhaps to uh, stimulate this conversation. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I want to get this out in the open here. 
pretty... Yeah, at least the points that he wants to make are coming up, so we'll see in a minute. That's right. So why does he do this? I don't know. But like Rich has said, why he does this may be stated in the next coming verses. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so verse uh, 38, but the Lord said to him, now you Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and plate as required by tradition, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. So he, you just, fully he just changed gears from uh, spoons and plates and stuff to their internal greed and wickedness. <laughs> like the transition here is all of a sudden we're talking about clean hands, clean cups, clean bowls, clean whatever. And the Lord Jesus says, you're good at doing that. You're good at cleaning the outside, the part that shows, but inside, inside you are full of greed and wickedness. And it's my guess that he never gets invited back to this guy's house. <laughs> you think, yeah. Verse 40, you foolish ones, acting without reflection or intelligence, did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But give that which is within as charity, that is, acts of mercy and compassion, not as public display, but as an expression of your faithfulness to God. And then indeed, all things are clean for you. Wow. So what a rap. Jesus, Jesus concerned with the cleanliness inside. That's right. That's, again, perhaps it was to, to stimulate that very point, knowing full well what, what uh, we say even before we say it. He, uh... Good morning to all who are joining us. I'm, uh, I just haven't, haven't got my act together at this end so much. There we go. Yep. Okay, so... Morning. He says... I didn't yes. ceremonially wash my hands, but you aren't washing your hearts. You aren't living clean, internally lives. And you think, okay, well... Yeah, what's more important, a clean hand or a clean heart? That's right. <laughs> That's not the clean hands are not important. They are, but there's a higher priority here. Get clean on the inside, and, uh, you know, the, many of the things on the outside are going to take care of themselves automatically. Yeah. Uh, it, not necessarily uh, uh, cleansing your hands, per se, but uh, uh, the, 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 there's a priority here that the Lord is after. That's clean right. up and clean up your act on the inside. And, that's what and really, that's how the gospel works. The Lord Jesus comes into our lives, into our hearts, into our brain, whatever, and changes us from the inside out. Whereas the cults change you from the outside in. In some of the cults, you have to chant Harry, Harry, Harry Krishna 10,000 times a day. The outward thing there tells everybody you're holy. Or in another cult, you can only eat this or that because everything else. So the, the, the visual outward show is how everything else works. But the Lord Jesus comes into a heart, lights a corner of your life that says, this does not glorify me. I will give you grace to replace that with something that does. And then, and then the, the, the change continues to permeate as long as we walk in what he's shedding his light on in us. Um, so, so different, so, so much like Jesus that he would care for our innards, not just our exteriors. And, and Christians really judge each other on exteriors, and we need to be careful of that. There's a place that we need to have conversation with somebody about their exterior, but, um, you know, we have to look at the log in our own eye first and be really prayed mm -hmm. up and not just go blasting people with a shotgun about all of the all of the <laughs> trouble troubling things in their life. Yep. Yep. Very true. Verse 42. Please. But whoa, judgment is coming to you, Pharisees, because you self-righteously tithe mint 
and rue and every little garden herb tending to all the minutia and yet disregard and neglect justice and the love of God. But these are the things you should have done without neglecting the others. Okay, so the Lord Jesus here is not teaching against tithing. He is. He's teaching for tithing. But, but if you're tithing, if you have not love and you do all these things, you're nothing. It has no value. So these are, again, outward things. Okay, here's my uh, 12 ounces of mint. Here's my one ounce that goes into the offering plate. I mean, it's just like ludicrous how far that they went to look good in the eyes of of their of their circle of friends or whatever. And yet, yeah, if you, if you read the, if you listen, the their agenda for a week is uh, typically to tithe one tenth of everything, uh, to pray and fast even one or two days a week. Uh, you know, if you list these things off, you say, oh, he does, you know, he does these things. It, it, it is uh, the impression you're left with. That's a godly man. I mean, yes. if you don't look, you know, if you don't uh, uh, consider uh, the, th the, the genuine things of God, the things God's most concerned with uh, on the inside of us, um, then uh, you get you get distracted by the external appearances. This is um, this is what this is about. The uh, Legal, and it seemed interesting, the correlation between uh, the legalist, the person who wants to toe the line on the law, and the, um, it's really a subterfuge of um, the show that they okay. put on, the, uh, the, uh, the um, behaviors, the rituals, these things that they cling to, um, uh, they go hand in hand. That's right. Uh, so you find that the, the whole legalistic perspective is one of outward impression and appearances and uh, the Lord is trying to get into matters of the heart the spirit the soul uh, and who you are on the inside that's right um, this is what he's uh, this is what he's he's more primarily concerned with good morning Joel welcome with us so when you would neglect justice and the love of God just preening for the public, just uh, doing everything so that your uh, <laughs> your outer gates are just are, are just whitewashed walls. I don't know. That's pretty strong that he says also. But the yep. things that you should do include justice and love for God. So what a what a radical. What a radical thing agape is that it would that it would turn our our life focus f from from uh, uh, love with no expected return to from eros the, caring about ourselves to to love with no expected return and these are the things that you should do uh, as well as the uh, rituals and like we talked about way up in the beginning if if you're working to get your heart clean, then the the outflow of that is cleaning up your outside too. Forty three. Yes, exactly. That's right. Yeah, more more woes to come here. Here's another one, verse forty three. This is Luke eleven forty three amplified. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you love the best seats in the synagogues and to be respectfully greeted at the marketplaces. So the best, best seats in the synagogue are given from a, a hierarchy of Pharisees. Like, you're more pharisaical than I, so you get to sit in a better seat. I mean, you're more, uh, maybe you've been doing it longer or whatever, or maybe you have some advanced pharisaical degree. So well, it comes back, yeah, it comes back to... Uh, 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 the, 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 the piety... They are of a higher pious order and That's therefore right. entitled to the better seats. That's what they're trying to get across, that image. That's right. But it's pure hypocrisy. That's right. <laughs> this, is, this is what he's, that's ultimately what he's digging down to. Let's, let's woe more. Yeah, one more. Woe, woe, woe to you. Uh, verse 44. 
What do you do for our, uh, you are like graves, which are unmarked and people walk over them without being aware of it and are ceremonially unclean. Wow. This is a little creepy one. You really have to know Jewish culture to understand this one. But uh, Jews, it, it should be a clear from what we've studied that uh, the Jews and uh, uh, having anything to do with dead bodies and so forth is just uh, abhorrent. And uh, what might happen, during, especially during a festival when there's so many strangers in town, um, that people uh, might accidentally step on a grave if it's not marked, and that would make them ceremonially unclean to participate in the holiday that they actually came for. Right. So that's, uh, you know, it becomes a real can of worms for them. So, but the and point... Go ahead, and the point? Yeah, what's the, yeah, the, um, so... Uh, you're, you, you Pharisees are like unmarked graves. In other words, you're, so, you're, um, you're dirty traps. <laughs> In a sense, people walk into you, and uh, for, the, uh, for whatever it is you're spreading, you make them unclean. That's right. You, uh, you, 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 by your example, by uh, the show and tell you're putting on, um, you distract them for the things of, from the things of God and, um, and pollute them. That's right. Uh, with with these, uh, these empty gestures and rituals and so forth. And you, think, and you think the Pharisees and the scribes have figured out every loophole for themselves. Like, of course, yeah. They've, yeah. Got, they've got the Torah, which is pretty clear about what it says. And they said, no, it's not clear enough. We're going to have to write book after book after hundreds of books um, explaining what the what the Levitical law really, what did God really mean to say? <laughs> Which is pretty arrogant. Um, God yeah. said what he said, and then he, he sealed it with an explanation point, and it said, this is it. And they said, no, that's not good enough. We, we've got to fine-tune your law, God, because you didn't tell us about this or that thing. And then, uh, and so... We can we can then look down on all of the people who don't know the loopholes because we know we're the insiders. We've got inside information, and we'll make them do all jump through the hoops that because they don't know they don't know what we know. <laughs> we got right. special knowledge. How uh, yeah. how strong? So in front of all of these lunch guests, the Lord Jesus chastises them for their lack of justice, for their lack of love, for their um, hypocrisy, and, and uh, so, so you can just imagine that there's this like, huh? There's, there's this dinner time conversation going on that has just <laughs> racked this, um, <laughs> and, and to be quite honest, we will see some of these conversations happen over, over meals as the election gets even more vigorous. Yeah. Uh, we know we need. Do you love each other? Do you want justice? Do you want? Do you really care, or do you just like to spout off and? Uh, and there's no. You know, God soften our hearts so we aren't just, you know flamethrowers without without love. Final thoughts? Yeah, this is, um, uh, you, you can see how uh, pointed and heated uh, this becomes. Uh, and uh, this is why the, the many uh, uh, educators who look at this realize this is a part of the big turn in Jesus' ministry uh, away from um, those that he's he's convinced uh, are not going to um, be open to him and his message. They just don't have the heart for it. They don't have the spirit. They are, in fact, spirit plegics. Uh, some people are missing limbs, and these people are missing the spirit. And it's from Jesus' point of view, they haven't got it. Amen. And uh, so why... Put out truth to them when all they can do is pervert it. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it, so. This is why uh, this is why he teaches in parables 
more frequently now. In fact, almost exclusively from this point on. But this is not a parallel. This is a strong chastisement in their face so that the spotlight on hypocrisy is booming at them. And now they have a choice to kill Jesus or to repent. And a few of them repent, by the way. Lord, we thank you. We thank you the spotlight of hypocrisy can shine on us. And we would ask that we would radiate your love and not arrows. That we would be transformed by your mercy, power, and grace. That we would live victorious lives. In Christ's name, amen. Yes, amen, Lord. Thank you. Thank you again for your word and your spirit. And the truth that they bring out. The truth that sets us free. That sets us free from the show and tell hypocrisy that we would otherwise might tend to indulge in. That as it will be, everything that is to be known will be known. And the truth will not be hidden. And the sooner we learn it, the better that we might seek it and pursue it. For that truly glorifies you. And that's what we want to do. And so we pray for your guidance and your direction. That we might live lives that glorify you. In Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Blessings to you all. Yep. Thanks for joining us. Stay on, Rich. Stay on. Bye.